Good afternoon. Uh, I am the engineer on this project. I'm not the policy person on the project, so please bear with that if uh, we get into any of the policy issues that y'all have really good questions about. I might not be able to answer them real well. And uh, this, this research really was starting from this concept of media and its role in defining and influencing policy and how we can use and how the media narrative the narratives that develop in the media can craft uh, and influence the, the decision making and specifically we are interested in the way that bicyclists and pedestrians are cast when many when media develops an account of, of that event so when we look at a crash we see that a uh, bicycle or pedestrian could be cast as a victim uh, where you know they got hit this is really sad it's awful we've screwed up how could we have allowed this to happen alternatively they could be cast as a villain that horrible awful bicyclist they ran the stop sign and they got killed you know, it's, they just, they killed themselves. How could they do that to themselves? And the way that we frame those narratives can have a direct impact on the decisions that are taken afterwards. Do we improve infrastructure? Do we uh, change policy, one that's, that requires more enforcement and really places the blame back on the pedestrian and the bicyclist? Or do we craft something that's more in the middle ground? So uh, what we want to do is we want to take a look at this variety of, of literature that exists out there. And we focused on uh, collecting a random sample from 12 different states. And, uh, and we tried to get them... Uh, randomly selected regionally, so we selected three from the east, three from the midwest, uh, three from the south, and then three from the west. Uh, the idea there was to try to see if there were any, make sure that we were accounting for any differences in regional uh, patterns, uh, gives, a, gives us another chance to capture a variety of different political atmospheres in, in these states. Uh, and it turns out that this was a dramatic change from the way that we initially intended to conduct the research and that goes back to the title of the presentation which we'll discover here in just a second and I'll explain that. So uh, we also looked at uh, trying to look at the rate of crash reporting based on the number of media accounts that we identified and looking at the, the FARS data for the amount of fatalities that occurred. And that's what we're seeing here, is looking at the crash reporting rate, the media just doesn't seem to care that much. When we look at the, the amount of, of cra fatal crashes that are reported, we're looking at less than 10% for pedestrians and at most 37% for bicyclists that receive any media attention at all. This is what caused us to have to change this approach for the research. We had initially selected a nice random set of 50 cities and had all of our FARS data lined up and then determined that there were no media accounts in these cities for us to match with those fatal crashes. Uh, we do see bicyclists reported uh, uh, receiving a little bit more media attention than pedestrians. Uh, but when we're talking about rates overall of 9.2% and 2%, we're not talking about very large numbers. The media just doesn't seem to care. So we collected uh, and looked at the narratives here. And one of the things that the policy people noted was that the, the media accounts tended to be episodic. And my understanding of what episodic means is it was taking a snapshot of a particular event um, and, and saying, yes, there was a crash. 
not developing a narrative around what may have contributed to that crash along, along the way, but just saying, this happened, done, we're done, this episode is over. Nothing else to see, nothing else to say. Episode close. And uh, that really has a limiting effect on, on policy because what it does is it cl basically closes everything up and just says, oh, it, it happened, it's over. Nothing else, no opportunity to say, well, we've got a recurring problem here. And uh, we see that overall, we do have a larger proportion of uh, victim characterization, but we still do see 28% uh, being characterized as villains in the overall narratives with 12% neutral. Uh, this comparison over here is looking at policy changes that occurred. And the specific thing here is... Uh, we're not seeing much relationship uh, between the narrative frames of victim versus villain and the policies that result uh, with the one possible be, uh, exception being characterization of victim versus villain and a policy change in conservative states. Um, but that when we're looking at our p-values, it's still relatively small at 0.068. So it's, it's possible, but it would require further <laughs> examination. We also looked at infrastructure change on whether infrastructure change resulted after a crash. And because of some difficulties matching the exact locations based on the media accounts, this also changed from our original uh, research direction. But we still identified uh, over 100 sites that had uh, where we identified the exact location of the crash. Uh, primarily, we were able to identify those uh, locations at intersections uh, just because it, it was matched up a little bit easier. That gave us enough geographic information to, to identify them. Uh, and overall, we, we matched them for, we saw infrastructure changes occurring in about 30% of the crashes that we were able to identify the locations. So our pedestrian policies um, could be directed at drivers. Um, and this is uh, looking back at the existing policies and the review that the policy people made on that and identifying that mall states tend to have laws in place uh, respecting crosswalks and sidewalks and saying drivers aren't allowed to drive over pedestrians who are on in a crosswalk or drive over a pedestrian that's on a sidewalk. So the pedestrians have some safe spaces in theory. Um, but then there's also some laws that denote that the pedestrians must follow the control signals. So there's some balance that's out there as far as the requirements. Um, we see that overall that we don't, during the time period of our study from 2007 to 2015, we saw very little change at the state level in the 12 states that we had in our study. So we did some hypothesis tests. We are looking primarily at uh, differences between bicyclists and pedestrians and trying to look at whether they were, they were characterized differently. When we looked at victim characterization, the crash reporting rate, infrastructure change, and policy change, and then also at the differences between the villain and the victim rates when we we're thinking about uh, infrastructure change and policy change. So uh, victim and villain characterization doesn't seem to appear to affect policy change or infrastructure change for the sample that we have. So the, the characterization isn't really impacting policy right now or reaction. However, we do see that pedestrians uh, are characterized as victims much more often than bicyclists. 
bicyclists are much more likely to be those awful villains that are out there destroying the roadway and causing themselves to die. Those horrible bicyclists. We also see the bicyclist crashes reported uh, more often, but we also see the bicycle chain policy change also seem, seems to be more prevalent, um, which is nice as well. So at the regional level, uh, bicycle crash reporting rate is higher regardless of the region that we're considering. So uh, throughout the country, bicycle reporting rate, crash rate, media crash reporting rate is much higher. Um, at the state level, uh, there's lots of states that just don't have any media accounts or very few media accounts of, of the crashes. So our sample sizes are quite small, uh, but we did notice some significant differences in Indiana, Maine, and Pennsylvania in terms of the victim characterization with the bicyclists being characterized as villains uh, more often pedestrians as victims, and then policy change was more prevalent in Maine, Pennsylvania, and Georgia. We also created three models looking at victim characterization, policy change, and infrastructure change. And for the logic models that we developed, the victim characterization seemed to be influenced most by whether they were a pedestrian or a bicyclist, and then how old they were. With young people, five to 20, being more likely to be villains. And those 76 and older, villains. Adults, 21 to, to 75, nope. So I'm not as, since I'm not a policy person, I'm not completely sure about the conclusion here, but I think part of it might be that adults are writing the media accounts. Working age adults are going to then portray themselves as being victims. It was clearly someone else's fault. They were the good guys. But kids, they're hooligans. And old people, you know, we just, we're expecting them to be sitting in their, in their retirement home when they're 76. They shouldn't be out on the street. It's their fault. Did you split the 5 to 20 and then it's more like, a villainous five-year-old is hard to hear. <laughs> I carefully looked at, at the exact data and looked at my entire distribution and the five, the five-year-olds, yeah. It were significantly different from the four-year-olds, and that's why I broke it there. It, 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 it's shocking, I agree. I, I was really surprised that five-year-olds could be villains, but that's what the, the media accounts and the distribution say. Like 17, I like No, no, I, I understand. I, 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 I was shocked that we're sitting here turning school age, elementary school age kids into villains. There's a chance that the media account was capturing some villainization associated with the parent, yes. That's absolutely possible in the media account because that's, that's certainly the, the, it was portraying that person or someone being a villain in that instance. Mm, I don't know. I think also you, you do see some cases where the parent was, was hit at the same time as the children. And so under those circumstances, you may say, oh, that horrible parent, they ran, they ran out in front of that car. Uh, with their kids, and how did they, they sacrifice their kids to the car? I, I, it, it's worth more examination. That's certainly the, the I'm not wanting to make this as the final end, end of the story, but this is what we found so far. Uh, and certainly, I, I'm not wanting to draw uh, the final conclusion based on just 12 states and, and eight years of data, but it, it's still a surprising finding to me. Okay, um, 
for policy change. Um, crash reporting rate does have an impact on whether we see a policy change. So as the media reports uh, more often, uh, we tend to see a little bit more, uh, we do s tend to see a more likely uh, crash reporting uh, or policy change. Um, if the media source was a state level um, media source, so it was it was a state level kind of media announcement, uh, then it was also having a, a very positive influence on policy change. And then uh, the most concern, the most surprising thing about this is that the conservative political culture had a positive influence on policy change. That certainly was not our hypothesis when we started, but that was what the, the model tells us at the very end. Um, and then uh, also uh, older adults and then 21 to 30 year olds have a positive influence on policy change. For infrastructure change, uh, nothing matters except how big the place is. So if you've got a big city with a lot of resources, then infrastructure change tended to occur. Otherwise, oh. So limitations, uh, as I said earlier, we tried to utilize the forest data as our starting spot originally, uh, but we couldn't identify and match any uh, with news articles, so that was a problem. Uh, we really need to generate more mapping to really understand this infrastructure change component more reliability, reliably, especially in the case where we're looking at mid-block type crashes. Uh, we, we just have not done enough to, to match that up right now. Uh, victim narrative is uh, highly prevalent and it's uh, not associated with uh, the. It's not focused on the cr on the factors associated with the crash itself. It's not focused on low visibility, poor road condition, or texting while driving. It's just focused on uh, the crash. Uh, and then we tended to see no policy changes for bicycle and pedestrian safety at the state level. Inclusions, victim characterization, as I said, uh, these are the, the big primary findings that we have for everything. <sighs> Crashes involving bicycle and pedestrians need more visibility in media accounts. Uh, clearly, 2% of pedestrian crashes is not going to draw much attention to the need of pedestrians which will likely not have much influence on encouraging change. And then uh, I believe that we need to, have to really try to look at identifying those factors that are influencing media reporting. Um, and then I'm trying to understand infrastructure change by increasing our sample size. I also want to look at the age bias and victim characterization that requires further investigation to fully understand that. And then uh, I'm, as I said, I'm quite po uh, puzzled given our emphasis based on policies such as school zones and safe routes to school. Uh, also, the, the that horrible bicyclist, we really should understand their victim care, their villain characterization a little bit more. Hopefully I've caught up a little bit.